My name is Andy Jasky. I'm an application engineer here at Cap Inc. Um, and also, I'm a, a kayaker. Um, and not only is am I a kayaker, but I also like building kayaks. Um, and so, uh, a few months ago, I decided that I would try and um, see if there was some other way I could possibly build a kayak. And uh, Cap Inc. with their 3D printing, I decided hey, I wonder if I could actually 3D print portions of a kayak. Use SolidWorks to design it, um, use the whole suite to, to really streamline that design, make something that allows me to test it before I, I build anything, and then quickly um, assemble a, a, a boat without having to do lots and lots of refitting. Um, so reduce my actual build time. And so I, I approached CAP and, um, and, and they liked the idea. So, uh, so here we are um, with my kayak project that I'm trying to uh, to build a 3D printed kayak. Many years ago, I, uh, I started started kind of moving away from just paddling kayaks to actually wanting to design them. Uh, as an engineer, obviously, I look at any pro at any project or any any um, item, and I go, "Well, gee, I wonder if I can make that better. Or I wonder if I can make that different." And then that immediately leads into lots and lots of research because that's just kind of what I like doing. I I'm also really enjoy history. So uh, kayaking is kind of the, the best, best of those worlds. It's a really fun um, activity, athletic activity, but at the same time there's a huge amount of history on it um, and the design of these boats. Well, most people when you ever say kayak you think of you know these solid boats that you can see at Walmart or Dick's Sporting Goods and uh, you know there's solid plastic um, all the way around and that, that's true that's, that's a more modern interpretation. Um, however a traditional kayak, um, so the kayak that, that were originally developed um, you know, by, by the Inuit, by the you know the, the northern people, um, they're what's called a skin-on frame kayak. So what that means is that it's kind of a skeleton, if you will, of these cross sections and these stringers. And then there's skin, and literally it used to be seal skin that would be stretched over this frame, um, and that ultimately produces an extremely lightweight boat um, without having to use a whole lot of material. You have a relatively complex internal structure that then produces these really you know beautiful curves and these beautiful shapes, and so that kind of fits in and nests with with 3D printing to some degree because with 3D printing you can have complex shapes that don't use a whole lot of material. You, you, you don't, as with regular manufacturing processes, um, you, there's a hit for complex geometry. Um, with 3D printing there's not. So um, it seemed in my, in my head to be a kind of perfect, perfect balance there, perfect marriage. I found a JPEG image of a print created by Harvey Golden of a West Greenland kayak that was collected about a hundred years ago. To use as a visual reference when creating my design in SOLIDWORKS. My goal was not to create an exact copy, but rather to create a new design with modern performance that would visually point back to the traditional skin-on frame kayaks of Greenland. I also wanted to be able to manufacture the boat with as little manual labor as possible using 3D printing where appropriate. I first used sketch pictures in SOLIDWORKS to bring the 2D image into my modeling space. I placed three copies of the print in my three reference planes and aligned them together. This gave me the ability to see the kayak as if under tracing paper when creating the geometry for my design. My first sketch was of the side profile of the kayak. I used splines to form the smooth sweeping curves along the deck and keel. As I mentioned before, the goal was not to create an exact copy, and you can see here that even in my first sketch I began to deviate by increasing the overall and waterline length. As I started to add more and more sketch geometry, I changed the colors of my sketches to help identify what parts of the geometry they were controlling. Here I have used orange for my driving profile geometry. I repeated the same basic steps when creating the lines on the top plane. Creating the section lines was a bit tricky. I knew I needed to change the section profiles to ensure that I would fit in the boat, and also to ensure stability. I started this sketch by exactly copying the lines on the print. Once I had finished creating geometry for all three reference images, I had enough 2D geometry to start moving to a more 3D shape. I began by transposing portions of the section sketch onto parallel planes that were placed at the correct section locations on the boat. This gave me a 3D section, seen here in yellow, that I would be able to reference as I started to develop the 3D surfaces for the final design. At this point, I hit my first real snag. I projected my side profile onto my top view. This would give me the path that represents where the deck meets the hole, 
also known as the shear line. While SolidWorks easily created the geometry, a quick look at the curvature and I knew that it would be very difficult to bend a piece of wood into the shape I needed. The primary reason was that I would need to bend the wood in more than one plane to produce the complex curvature. It would also mean a much more difficult time when trying to cut the wood. After some deeper research and thought, I found a solution. I could create a plane that was aligned from bow to stern and then create a 2D spline that would be very close to my original complicated shear line. The difference was that this piece of wood would only need to bend in one plane. Once this was completed, the result was a correct looking geometry in the side and top views, but also geometry that was just a simple bow shape on a 2D plane. You can see how much simpler the new geometry is when overlaid with the original. Mirroring the shear stringer shows how the upswept bow and stern are being created by simply bending the stringers in a single plane. I then used the same technique for the chines. The final result was a full sketch structure that was ready to be used to create the 3D surface geometry for the whole of the boat. Stepping through the model, you can see how once I had the outside hole shape, it was just a matter of adding increased levels of detail. I did not completely finish out the design at this time, however, because I still needed to run some studies on my model to ensure that my design would meet my performance goals. In the next video, I will show how I took my preliminary design and used SolidWorks to evaluate my design and make necessary changes to improve the performance.